Hello, everyone, and welcome to Group Coaching 101. My name is Maribel Alleman. I'm co-founder of Group Coaching HQ, and with me is my co-founder, Dominique Mass. Um, we are so excited to be here with you. I'm obviously an executive coach, leadership coach, and I have been working in the corporate settings for the last 20 some years. I won't <laughs> aging myself there. Um, and it certainly has been a pleasure learning from clients and organizations and the individuals that make group coaching such a delight. Um, group coaching, we are are focused on creating a professional learning community um, at all levels. And our mission, our love is to joyfully research, experiment, and expand the field of group coaching. Uh, Dom, let me toss it over to you. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Maribel. And feel free as you're joining in to add your uh, location to the chat. Tell us what you're curious about. Uh, my name is Dominique Mass. I'm also the co-founder of Group Coaching HQ. And today I'm a leadership coach, executive coach and, and group coach, of course. Um, and today what we really want to do is give you a sense of what group coaching is about and a couple of frameworks that we use in our certification program to really dive into what it means to be a group coach and what a cohesive group coaching uh, cohort might look like. So with that, you'll be able to ask questions through the comments sections. We encourage you to do that as much as you uh, possibly can and want. We'll try to get to all the questions as we go through. We might not get to them, but we'll, we'll do our best. And if not, we'll, we'll find another way to, to respond. Um, so let's, let's go. Let's dive in. The first thing that we want to do is really think about the difference between group coaching and team coaching. These terms have been used interchangeably, and we really want to insist on uh, the group aspect of group coaching. So what we're talking about when we talk about groups is really a group of individuals who have a common context and they come together in order to work on their own individual goals. So some, some examples might be going through a life or career transition. It could be that everybody has the same level of responsibility in a larger organization. For example, everybody is a director of their own department, but they don't necessarily work together as a team. Um, another another uh, context could be that everybody is a new parent. So lots of different uh, areas that people would get together around. But the first thing that we encourage you to do is to think about who are you bringing together? If you want to create a group coaching program, what is the what is the thread? What is the commonality between everyone? So a quick example, uh, when I very first started doing group coaching, I brought in people together who were all in a life transition. And their, their shared context, the big question behind the program was, what's next? And so they were all trying to work out what was next in their career. I had someone who was thinking about what's next in terms of the city that they moved to, but they were all in that sort of messy middle, not knowing where, where they were going to go next. Maribel, why don't you tell us a little bit about team coaching so that we have a really clear understanding of the difference between of the two. Of course. And I see Jose Manuel, you're asking to chat and participate through the chat. Absolutely. Drop in your comments there. Love to hear where you're from. Uh, but definitely, as you hear things come up, drop in your questions and we'll be able to look at them as we go through the um through the show, through the program. So in terms of team coaching, um, one of the things that people often confuse is that team members are working on the individual goals. And this, that is not the case. The team in the individual members of that team, their personal goals are actually secondary to the team coaching goal. So it could be that a division has come together and they're trying to figure out what is our mission within the company? How do we want to be seen? What's our brand within the organization? Um, so then the team works on that particular goal together throughout the team coaching journey. Some other things that they could be thinking about is, well, we seem to be aligned on the goals, but somehow we can't seem to be making movement forward. Uh, we seem to be getting stuff. What is going on? And the team coaching journey is to help them identify what has happened here. What are some of the blocks and obstacles, even though you have 
a particular path, a strategy map, a, a common goal, you're still getting stuck. What's happening here? And through that team coaching, diagnosing, discovering what is happening and addressing those obstacles. It could be something around specific project. Um, do they have to make a decision? Do they have to build out a whole change initiative? Those types are the goals and commonalities that a team coaching journey pulls everybody together on. Now, one of the things in, I'm actually doing several team coachings right now, and it's so fascinating because what it tends to happen is the relationship aspect of the team coaching dynamics really impacts how well they can move forward. So in team coaching, not, probably not a surprise to many of you in coaching, we come down to what is happening with the team dynamics? What is happening among team members? And how is that helping or hindering your overall team goal? Um, in one particular group, I'll give you an example, that team was focused on their brand, uh, trying to figure out our, their identity within the organization. However, one of the things that kept blocking them is because they had not had a real conversation about their different values, the different beliefs, the different experiences they brought to the table and how that was influencing what they wanted to create within the organization. So we started there. Like how do we align? How do we diagnose? And then move forward towards that overall team goal. And that has been a really exciting journey for them. But key to remember the difference is the team coaching journey is all focused on that team objective rather than the individuals. But the individuals bring in their strengths, their wisdom, their abilities, all in service of that. Amazing. Thanks so much, Maribel. And so just as a reminder, for the purpose of this webinar, we are going to focus on groups and not on teams. And so the first thing I, I want to share with you in a second is a model that we have created, which shares the element of a cohesive group coaching cohort. And before I do that, I want to share that everything begins with trust. And we would love to be able to give you all of our content right now, but we can't. We had to be very, very uh, ruthless around what we share today. So I'm going to give you some tips and ideas along the way, but we won't be able to dive into all of them quite as deep as we might want to. But in that model, and I'll share it in a second, everything begins with trusts and everything ends with trust. And so how do we make sure that we create trust in a group? Very quickly, co-creating norms or agreements of how you might work together as a group is going to be really, really important. How you contract with the organization, with the leadership team of those who might be in your group, and whether you're in or out of an organization uh, with the participants themselves that's going to be really important. How do you know and how do they know what confidentiality looks like? What's going to be reported if someone else is paying for the group coaching program? So norms, contracting, getting to know your participants as much as possible is going to be super helpful in creating that trust as well. Before you start your program, if you're able to, you might want to have one-on-one -on -one calls, even if they're very short, or perhaps have an onboarding questionnaire just so that you get to know who's in the room. If you have one-on-one -on -one calls, it gives your participants a chance to get to know you as well. And then finally, the one thing that we highly encourage you to do is create deep connections from, from the very start of the session, uh, in session one, start to dive deep. We, we know from research that vulnerability actually comes before trust. That is what helps us to create trust. Now, vulnerability means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So the way that we're thinking about it here is really that being able to open up about things that we thought we might not dare to share in public before. So it, all, it allows others to open up to open up as well. Um, I want to share a quick story before I share the model. There was a group that I met every single person one on one. And I remember saying to the organization I was coaching for, you know, I, I don't know how this group is going to work together. I don't think there's a lot of commonalities here. In our very first session, we did three rounds of what I call, if you already knew me. 
So you go around the room. If you already knew me, you'd know that, blah, blah, blah. If you really, really knew me, and then the third round is if you really, really, really knew me. And by round two, one person opened up about being a caretaker for her parents and how that was having a really deep and big impact on their, on her professional life. She was honest about where she was and the struggle was real. And the door was opened for everyone else to be authentic, to share what they were going through. Another said, another one shared that she was struggling with her teenage son. Another person talked about her chronic illness. And suddenly we had a bunch of humans that were truly connected and that were starting to understand each other. Um, if you're not in an organization and perhaps you don't feel as comfortable going in that deep, you might ask a question like, hey, what's the challenge you're currently facing in your situation? What's a leadership challenge? What's a challenge in terms of your communication? So really thinking about what the theme for your group might be. So we mentioned everything starts and ends with trust and openness. So let me share my screen again um, to show you this model that we that we like to use. Um, and what we have here at the center is trust, right? This is a space where members know that they are in a judgment-free zone that is focused on their own success. Everybody is there for each other. We talk about insight. This is where members can deepen their awareness, their own self-connection, but also help each other understand themselves and deepen their awareness and their self-connection. So we always say it's really important that the group members become coaches to each other. You don't have the monopoly, like the monopoly on coaching in, in a group coaching session. Everyone can ask each other questions. Everyone can be curious with each other. Inspiration is a really big part of bringing cohesion to a group. Members really inspire each other through sharing their success, through supporting each other, through uh, celebrating each other's achievements. That's that's a really important part of the group coaching uh, situation. Sometimes it's really hard for individuals, including myself, to recognize our achievements. So how do you make sure that there's inspiration from everyone in the group? Support. Maribel mentioned that in teams, uh, everybody's strengths are used. Same thing in groups. How can you encourage your participants to see each other's strengths and to name them so that everybody can uh, witness how powerful everybody else is, right? So they, 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 they'll remember each other's strengths, they'll remember each other's challenges, each other's aspirations, and they'll mirror each other. They'll share what they see in each other. And this is something that you as a group coach, A, need to encourage, but also you might need to actually teach people how to do that. Not everyone knows how to do that. Challenge uh, is really important when the group has built a ton of trust that there is a uh, opportunity to challenge each other, to expand each other's perspective, to really dare to take risks, to ask riskier and riskier questions and to share uh, reflections that might not always be the most pleasant to hear. But if you've created that safety for the group, that trust, then that space is going to be incredibly powerful in, in, in supporting everyone's growth. The next one is curiosity. We talked about how everybody in the group is going to ask each other questions. This is where everybody's open to excavating topics. They're really truly curious about each other. They investigate possibilities with and for each other. And movement, I think that's my favorite. It, as coaches, you know, we're always moving towards action. And it's the same thing in a group. There's that fluidity, that magic that happens when everyone is participating and, and everyone is moving forward. Um, I personally, I'm part of a group and, and have been in that group for nine months. And we met this week and we were talking about how far each of us has come in the nine months that we've been together. So that movement and support and accountability with each other is going to be really, really important as everyone moves towards their own goals, uh, really based on the mindset shifts that are facilitated by everyone in the group, um, their challenges, by their aspiration. So we go back 
from all of this to trust and the openness that creates a judgment-free zone that is focused on each of the members successes and with that we, we've learned about the group and what makes a group uh, coaching cohort cohesive so i'm going to hand it over to maribel to talk a little bit more about what uh what the role of the coach is in all of this so maribel yeah. over to you thank you so one of the things that we always and Dom kept mentioning this idea of trust. And we always think about the group coaches as having the ability to trust ourselves as group coaches in order to orchestrate that cohesive group that we just went over in, the, in that model. Um, and that trust means that we need to also be mindful as always in any of our coaching. So many of you are probably doing one-on-one -on -one coachings, trusting the process and being able to step back. Um, the five lenses of a group coach, as you see in the model, starts with this idea of release, <laughs> which means give up the need to control. And this is where trust in ourselves, trust in the process becomes so, so critical. I remember when I first started doing group coaching and team coaching uh, was this idea of, I need to orchestrate everything. I have everything down to the second. I have the slides, I have this. I was in coaching. <laughs> At that point, it becomes facilitation or teaching or training or whatever it might be, but it's not coaching. So there's such a key in order to release that need to control. Now, in our cohorts, one of the things that we ask the coaches to do is to actually demo and coach with each other and go through that experience. And as they go through that journey at the end, it's like, yeah, that was the biggest and toughest learning, this, ability, this need to control things to prove my value. Um, yet that is the one thing, if we give into that, we actually diminish the experience of the group. So the lenses of a successful, of a really, um, of a group coach that is able to orchestrate that cohesive group starts with this idea of release. But then evoking, evoking insights, questions, and appreciations. And that often comes in from the powerful listening that we engage in as coaches. Hmm. Is this an opportunity for the group to go in a little bit deeper or perhaps move away from the natural tendency of a group to advise, tell their stories rather than be curious of each other? So as a coach, we want to evoke. Um, and it could be something as simple as saying, you know, Mary, I just noticed you know, your, your eyebrows went all the way up <laughs> as, you know, as Maribel was sharing that particular thing. What's coming? Um, curious what's coming up and inviting the group also to ask those questions right um what did you appreciate about each other what did you appreciate about this sharing and so evoking is really about i love this visual of stirring the pot with the group and getting them to ask more questions of each other but if they seem stuck for you to then be ready to ask that question and opening it up to the group which then leads to this other lens, um, this idea of synthesizing. Often, so one of the things that one of our favorite exercises is uh, the rosebud thorn. Like, what's ha what's your win? What's your hope? What's something that's challenging for you? And all sorts of things happen. But in a group, you'll start to notice their threads, their themes that are coming up. And the group is actually so in tune with each other that they can pick up on those threats so asking them what did you hear from each other what are some themes what are some threats they can absolutely hone in on that but if they can't if perhaps it's too varied then it's for you to call it out as a group coach synthesizing what are the issues the concerns and the themes that are surfacing from that discussion um in one group that we had um it, the conversation went oh, five million ways right and there were two key themes coming up what's next but also the grief of having to let go of the past right so to move on to what's next that means i am kind of sad about having to leave all this stuff but in all the sharings they weren't quite catching those two themes so I said, you know can i share what i've heard right is this what's coming up and they then they took it back from me and they refined it and they said yes this is exactly what we need to think about but first perhaps we can 
talk about this idea of releasing the past, letting go without regret so we can move on to what's next, right? So this idea of synthesizing is anchored on your listening, on your ability to observe the verbal and nonverbals as well. Um, exploring, and this is this idea of continuing to stir the pot. What else? Right? How many of you love the question of what else? And I could, what else is happening? What else do you appreciate? What questions do you have of each other? Right? And then allowing each individual to share, but also inviting them, if, the pers- if there's one person sharing, inviting others to think about how does this relate to you? How does this discussion help you in your particular goal? Because remember, groups are united by a theme. Each individual has their own particular goal, their own particular need. So asking them to reflect, explore on their own, but perhaps there is a focus on one particular individual, that invites, opens up this idea of exploration. But going in deeper, not being afraid, challenging them to actually do that. Um, I keep going, coming back to this wonderful moment we had in a group coaching session and the group said the woman in the cave. They were talking about all these different issues. And it's the woman in the cave. And that visual came from the group. And I asked them to explore that, in essence, what it meant for them. And every person had something, had a different significance, a different definition of that. But it was a powerful image that united them. And that was the beauty of the wisdom and the diversity in the group. And of course, as group coaches, we want to leave one enough time, but also enough space for everyone to think about how do they take action. As group coaches, we can offer that space for the individuals in the group to say, all right, this is conversation. This is what actually has helped me realize. And this is my commitment in order to move forward. So the acronym is RESET. As group coaches, the lenses that we can use is all about helping that group reset on the mindsets, on the behaviors, on the commitments that can help them move forward on their individual goal that's tied by that overall theme. So now we want to then be able to think about what actually happens in a session. We we mentioned this is what a cohesive group looks like. Uh, These are some of the lenses that come up. Uh, that you we could be using as a group coach. But now I'm going to toss it over to Dom in terms of what could be a framework to use in a group coaching session. Oh, Dom, we can't hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, what I was going to say is we will be answering questions that are in the chat afterwards. Um, but going back to this framework i really want to point out that this is a a suggested framework right so a framework versus a, a structure you can pick and choose what works for you and this would be used in a group that you have had at least one or two sessions with or it could be used as a one-off framework as well uh for for one-off sessions we have had participants in some of our certification programs who were asked to do just one session in their organization, one group coaching session. And so this is a framework that we offer uh, that you might be able to to use. So your check-in really, if you have been with the group, understanding, well, what does, uh, what what's happened? What, uh, what were the actions that you had shared that you wanted to take? What are you proud of? That sort of thing. Any wins here? Anything of note? If it's a group where you have only one session, we always say try to have a quick check-in that will connect people. So it might be as simple as uh, we sometimes say, what, what's one thing that you're bringing and one thing that you're leaving behind as you enter this session? So a quick check-in, you want to have people speak as quickly as possible. So they're not you're just sitting there inactive and you're talking at them. So each time, how can you involve people as quickly as possible? The next thing that we uh, invite you to, to offer to your group is a moment of grounding. For quite a lot of people, the moment where they come to their group coaching session is probably the first time in their day where they can actually slow down. So offering that moment of 
hey, let's take a let's take a breath together or let's journal for a couple of minutes. And if you can ground that in the theme or the topic that you have agreed on with the group, or perhaps that moment is all about understanding what it is that they want to work on in that, in that specific session, um, I always like to think about different types of learners and different types of people in a group. And so I try to offer different ways of grounding. So, you know, sometimes I'll say, let's, uh, let's explore, we're going to think about resilience today. So let's journal for two minutes, what does resilience mean to you? And then I'll say, some of us don't like to journal, you can doodle, you can close your eyes, you can feel into resilience. So whatever works for you. So that moment of grounding of centering does not have to be the same for everyone. It might be. It's entirely up to you how you run that. People are now ready, they're grounded, they're on the call. This is when we're going to potentially look at our norms again, if you have already co-created them. And a quick question around, hey, uh, last week we, we talked about our norms. Anything that we need to highlight, anything that's come up for anyone that's important uh, to remind us of, anything that you'd like to add. As one of our guest coaches, Marsha, once said, people don't know what they don't know until they're in the group. And so sometimes you'll co-create your norms in session one, but as they get to know each other, they realize and you realize that some updates need to happen. So you might want to review your norms. You might not. Optional. Um, and, and the note here also says if someone new joins the group, in some organizations it happens. There may be a newcomer to the group. Essentially, when a newcomer joins a group, it's a new group. The dynamics change, the, the way people, um, the trust that's been built might go out the window because now we have a stranger in the group. So it's really, really important if someone new joins the group or if someone leaves the group that you go back to those norms and check in with everybody. All right, this is the meat. This is where everything happens. This is the exploration of your chosen theme. You, ha you know what you're going to talk about, or perhaps part of the exploration is coming up with that theme. It's time to establish a common vocabulary. What does, uh, let's keep going with resilience. What does resilience mean to everybody? How does it show up in your body? How does it show up for you at work, in your personal life? So really establishing that understanding of what resilience means for everyone. You want to make sure, just like in your one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, that everyone is working towards something. So what is it that they'd like to get out of this session? I personally like to give one or two quiet minutes for everyone to have uh, have time to actually write this down and share it in the chat so that everybody can see, everybody knows what everybody would like to get out of the call, and they can support each other to get there. Um, and then this, this exploration can take so many different forms. We talk about so many different ways of doing that and give you tools, et cetera, in our, in our certification program. Uh, but it could be, you know, peer coaching, doing breakouts, uh, full group discussions, exploring through play, exploring through movement, so many different ways that this can be done. We always encourage, again, just like in a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, coaches to end their group coaching session with enough time, and this can be really hard, and, and it's important that you time yourself, that you give yourself that moment of reflection. What is it that you're taking away, and what is the action you want to uh, you want to take? Because we, remember, we're always thinking about movement in the group, right? We want to see each other evolve and, and support each other in that way. Um, I'm going to pause here because that's we, we've shared a lot, and I know a couple of questions. Uh, have come up. Lorena, you mentioned two questions, but I see uh, only one in the chat. So um, perhaps you can make sure that you add your second question and we'll answer it. And if any other questions are coming up, this is this is your time. We're gonna we're gonna pause our sharing here. Um, Maribel, would you like to to take that first question on confidentiality? Absolutely. And it's such an important one. And you're absolutely right, Lorena. It's the the trust leads 
and it embeds that um, ability to be vulnerable to also challenge. If you go back to that group, to our cohesive group model, um, we need to be able to challenge each other. But if I don't trust you're going to take it well, <laughs> or that you're going to go and talk about this moment elsewhere, and it's going to be maybe LinkedIn or Twitter, I'm not going to be too happy about that and certainly not want to share or challenge. So how do we do this? It starts with a norm setting. Uh, it definitely starts with a norm setting and the ability to give people the space to share with each other what is important to them and what does that actually look like, right? So in groups, especially when I have individuals that um, we go from meeting to meeting and it's everything's running and there's a million things happening, sometimes people do these things automatically and don't don't realize the impact of perhaps sharing outside of a group. I was in a company and it was interesting. We had um, three HR people and they're so committed and dedicated to the organization, uh, but they were part of group coaching and they immediately went back to their name names, but they're like, we need to talk about these themes that are coming up. <laughs> so we had put a pause. It's like, wait, wait, come back. Nothing outside of the group can be discussed. Those are the group's themes. We have not gotten permission to have those conversations outside of the group. So we had to reset the norms and talk about and repair trust. So to answer your question, Lorena, it starts with a norm setting, talking about what that actually looks like, and then ensuring that we are revisiting those. And as group coaches, we can celebrate when someone has actually lived through the norm. I had one individuals where one of the norms says we need to speak up and say when we're uncomfortable. And one person did it. It's like, this is really hard for me, super uncomfortable. So part of my role was to celebrate and say, thank you. You just lived up to our norms. That continues to set this idea of trust, like, wow, we're going through it. We're actually living through these commitments we have made towards each other. Yeah, thanks so much, Maribel. I think the the confidentiality piece is, I go back to contracting. We talked about that earlier. That's also so important to have in your contract so that people know that, uh, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas and what happens on this call stays on this call. And uh, to have that trust that the their leadership in organizations is not going to go and ask for, hey, what happened in your group coaching, coaching session? Like, or, or what was discussed, you know? that's going to be really, really important. And so you as a group coach has have to be extremely uh, ruthless and in how you set up your, your contracts as well. We have mm -hmm. a, a few more questions coming up. So I want to make sure that we, that we get to all of them. Um, so Lorena's second question came in. Um, so often working with clients from the same companies and they may be hesitant to participate in coaching sessions together. Have we encountered the situation in our practice and how have we effectively managed and addressed it? Yeah, I, I'm happy to start and Maribel jump in. Uh, this is real <laughs> and it's happened. Uh, it's happened many times. My main learning is that if I can avoid having uh, participants who would do work together, I tend to ask the, the organization, if possible, to separate them and perhaps do two groups or whatever it may be. Um, Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes they have to be together. So we go back to confidentiality. We go back to norms. And I always encourage people to share what they're comfortable with. And sometimes having, uh, and there's a question later on uh, that, that someone asked about breakouts and the full group. Sometimes if I know that two people, for example, work on the same team, I will make sure that they're in breakouts with others who are not in the same team so that they have a little bit more of that safety and give them that time to, to go deeper into their thoughts. Um, that way, when they come back, they can share whatever it is that they're comfortable sharing, but they've had an opportunity to think about the, the, the issue at hand. Uh, Maribel, what's another technique or, or tip that you may be thinking about? So this happens all the time, like you said. I, I, the The phrase I tend to use is um, go slow to go fast. And what do I mean by that is allowing the time in that group coaching journey to develop the bonds and the relationships to clear up any 
assumptions. So we actually spend a lot of time, a lot more than in a normal group setting, a group coaching setting, establishing those norms. But then the as we work through the themes, the exercises actually intentionally slow down the conversation so that people are connecting and going deeper. So they start to surface, oh, that was an assumption. Oh, wow. Interesting. You're going through the same thing. What I will say, and I, I've run three cohorts like that this year. And what has been amazing and wonderful is the by pretty much the end of the first session, most of them apprehensive coming in it's like, wait, I, I battled with you across the way. Um, they come back and they say, I'm so glad I don't feel alone anymore. I'm, I'm not the only one. Right? What well, we actually one of the things in terms of that reset model, letting go control, so also letting go of our assumptions. Um, they actually, as they open up and go through the conversations, they realize that sometimes they may be getting stuck in assumptions or that they might, that they're not alone. And they this is an opportunity for them to connect and talk about these themes that are challenging them all across the organization. And the second thing I would say is, I don't ask them to separate people out because that's who they want in the group in terms of the organization. But I do ask if they're specific challenges among relationships. <laughs> so if you have two people at complete odds with each other, let's have a conversation with that before they walk into the room. And the, the last thing is definitely do not put leaders, so direct reporting relationships. So if you have a vice president and their director in the same group, that's not going to work. That is That one is a hard line that I'm, I, I advise the client that it will actually damage the group dynamics. So if they're at the same level or similar levels, directors, senior directors, that's one thing. But you can't have an executive vice president and then 10 directors. <laughs> that is going to damage the ability for them to be free. It's just natural human nature. Thanks so much, Maribel. Um, I'm going to keep moving. We have we have nine minutes and we have more questions. So Chris, uh, hey, Chris is asking how to encourage group participants to listen, acknowledge each other rather than give advice to each other. Amazing question that happens all the time. We talked about that in our last uh, in our cohort, actually, last Friday. It's a tendency that every human has to want to share their own experience. And what about this? And what about that? And 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 so what we always say is it is your role to help every single participant understand what coaching is in the same way that you would do that with a one on one client. You'll you'll talk to them about coaching, how it works, how it happens and and the fact that they are here to do that for each other. And so everybody in the group is expected to adopt a coaching mindset. Everybody is expected to ask curious questions. And what I like to do, sometimes we'll have a, an orientation. So before the group actually begins, we'll have a 30-minute session around, hey, uh, this is how we behave in, in coaching. This is how we ask great questions of each other. And this is why we don't want to give advice. We believe that everyone is resourceful and creative and can come to their own conclusion. So there's a little bit of education. Actually, there's a lot of education that uh, often needs to be done. And then within the group, when you see it happening, it's okay to say, hey, I'm going to pull us back here for a second and bring it, bring us back to curiosity and questions versus giving advice. And uh, perhaps at the end of our session, we can have five minutes where everyone shares one piece of advice. But for now, let's go back to questions and let's go back to being curious with each other. So it, as, a, as a group coach, this is your responsibility to make sure that you are attentive to what is happening in the group and ensuring that you're pulling people back when they are going into that advice giving mode. Um, we have we have a few more questions. So I'm, I'm going to, Maribel, I'm going to ask you the next one, if you don't mind, sure. so we okay. can keep moving. Um, Federica asks, how do you balance and manage sharing all together and breakout rooms to allow space uh, for everyone to speak? So this is another um, big responsibility as a group coach. Uh, in the moment in the room, if you notice one person is dominating the conversation, inviting others to be able to come into the conversation. And you may say, oh, 
let, let me pause you right there. You just said something that I'm noticing others are reacting to. And then you invite them, ask a question. What's your reflection? What's the aha moment that's happening for you? In breakout rooms, definitely, like Dom said, reminding them, this is how we coach. These are the um, behaviors that we that can help you have those great insights that you're looking for. Um, also, just a little trick of in breakout rooms, just sending a reminder, remember three minutes per person, especially if they seem to have the tendency not to uh, engage in peer coaching. So at the beginning, it's a learning curve, right? One of the other things that I do is I ask them, like, how is it going? Right? How is this conversation going? How um, do you feel you've had an opportunity to share your voice? And they start to normalize, right? And, and sometimes um, I've had individuals that come in with really tragic news and the whole group's like, never mind us. We want to support this person. But that is a collective unanimous agreement. That's very different. Um, so unless you have that as a group coach is basic interventions of allowing everyone to share. And you could also say, you know what? Let, let's pause you here. What's a question that you, you would like to toss the group to explore with you, right? And so this is the theme that's coming up for them. Have them expand on one specific question. Amazing. Thanks so much, Maraban. We'll take the last question before, before we end for today. Um, from Lisa, if we were hosting a group coaching session for a group of people who've not experienced coaching before and who tend to think that coaching is more about giving advice or mentoring or um uh yeah or, or being an advisor as opposed to coaching then how would you handle that um yeah go ahead maribel so can you repeat the question i'm sorry i'm not sure. yeah if you, if you have a group of in this case lisa asks about students but mm -hmm. of people who are not familiar with coaching and who mm -hmm. believe that coaching is more about advising than coaching mm -hmm. then how would you handle that from the start how would you start that session well one is the basic education we have this wonderful um uh, slide and and it's called the ask tell spectrum and be able to tell them this is what happens when we're asking mode this is what happens when we're in tell mode and at, and here is where the coaching comes in it's like tell us about a time where you were just sitting there and someone's just throwing advice at you <laughs> Right? And what it tells about the experience and what do you, is, is that what you're looking for? So sourcing from their own experience. So that's a tip of a facilitation tip that can be very helpful. And also just pausing and saying, Maribel, you know, you just, you have just shared um, experience from your last five years, but let me pause from the group. Um, and this is a moment of learning. Um, do we think this is advice giving or we think this is coaching, right? And just pull it back pull it back, all with gentle kindness and the reminder that we are all learning together on how to engage in this process. Um, and having them think about at the end process, the power of the questions. What happened? What were the insights? How do you feel after having used this coaching methodology? Right? That embeds that learning and that experience for the group. Thanks so much, Maribel. And with that, I'm going to I'm gonna stop us. We are nearly at time. I do uh, want to thank everyone for showing up and for asking such wonderful questions. I'm going to put a few links in the chat for anyone who, who uh, is interested in learning more about what we do and how you might uh, learn with us. The first one is our upcoming events. We host a ton of events, uh, all related to group coaching. So if you'd like to continue your education on group coaching, please uh, join us for, for some of them. The second one is our programs. We have a certification program that is accredited by ICF. You get 30 ICF CCU. Our next start date is January. We'd love to see you uh, join us. Um, our next one is our video library. You can access all of our previous events through the library. It's $7.99 a month. It's nice and easy uh, to access. You can join our mailing list. Make sure that you follow us on LinkedIn so that you know everything that's happening at Group Coaching HQ. And finally, if you are interested in joining us for the certification program, feel free to make some time on my calendar to chat about what that might look like and, and really ask the questions that will help you understand if it's the right program for you. Um, but for now, I want to say a huge thank you to Maribel uh, and to you all for being with us today. And Thanks thank so much, you, everyone. And thank you all. It was so great to hear from all of you.
Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Bye, all.